Well, good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, or good midday, whatever it is. Uh, we are so glad to have you all with us here today. I'm Laura Perry Johnson, and I'm the Associate Dean for Extension in the College of Agriculture and Environmental Sciences. And I want to welcome you here today to our Women in Ag Leadership webinar series. Uh, we typically like to do this as an interactive event so people can meet each other and get to know each other and hopefully form some collaborations or some partnerships. Um, we have really taken kind of a hiatus on our seminars during the pandemic, but we had several requests to um, get back in the game. So uh, we decided to uh, start today with a virtual seminar and we'll continue that into 2021 and look at um, what the landscape looks like as far as when we can actually get back together in real time. But I'm appreciative of everyone that is joining us here today. Um, there, as I look in the attendees group, there's a very diverse um, audience with us today, a, a very diverse group of people. Um, I want to first thank those that helped me set this up. Um, Lauren Ledbetter Griffith did a lot of the legwork and Christy Farner, Katie Fife, all from the Office of Learning and Organizational Development. And then Travis Ingram is our um, expert on technology and managing the webinar today. So thank you all um, for helping us. We do have um, a social media presence with the Women in Ag. So if you don't follow us on Facebook or some of the other social media channels, we hope that you will. We also have a website on the um, College of Ag uh, website, and I'll ask Lauren to type that web address in the chat so that you can go take a look if you haven't seen that. But we do archive all of our webinars there, so you can go back if you enjoyed this and you missed some of the previous speakers, you could go and uh, look at some of them. Um, what I usually try to do is just pick out someone interesting that happens to be female, that is working in the field of agriculture in some form or fashion, and try to get a variety of um, people that talk about uh, what got them into the field, um, what they do currently, and then just give us um, kind of some advice or some best practices. I think one of the things that really strikes me the most is no matter how different our speakers are as far as their current job or their current assignment, they all have um, similarities in their story, you know, what them got, what got them interested in science and agriculture. And so I'm sure that today will not be much different. But a few years back, we hosted a conference at the University of Georgia that was a regional conference that in, um, included most of the states in the southern region. And um, we talked about what are some of the best practices for women in agriculture and being able to form strong mentoring um, relationships and have good peer groups. Um, those are some of the things that were mentioned. So that is part of why we continue to do this Women in Ag seminar series. Today, I'm very excited um, to have one of our researchers that's going to be talking with us. Um, she has an appointment both in, in research and in teaching. So it's not an extension person. I like to um, pick people that I don't know a lot about sometimes. I first met Chevenar when we were on a committee together and got to know her. Um, and uh, so I thought she would be a great uh, speaker for us today. Shavanar Smith is an associate prep professor and she's also the graduate coordinator in plant pathology. She got her PhD from Kansas State University. I don't think she has nearly the accent that Michael Tate's does from, from Kansas. So I probably wouldn't have picked up on that. Um, she got her, her master's and bachelor's um, in biology from Tennessee State University. And today she is involved in a variety of research projects that look at um, different diseases and pathogens that affect some of our agricultural product, products. And um, with that, um, I told her I searched the web and did not find a whole lot of interesting tidbits or um, secret things I could tell you. Um, but she is very healthy. She's a vegetarian and she's very um, active and interested in staying healthy. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Shavanar. And thank you for being our speaker today. 
If you have questions, if you'll go ahead and type them in the text chat, um, then we'll answer them at the end of the series. Very good. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Thank you, Laura, for um, the introduction. And no, you didn't find much about me out on the web. I tried to keep a, a very low profile. Um, I appreciate the opportunity um, to do this this, this morning. Um, I've attended several of the Women in Ag um, talks and I've enjoyed all of them, of them. And I really think this is a very important platform, a nice platform for women in ag um, to have. Um, I do have to admit that um, I was a bit nervous initially because this is not a science talk and that is what I'm used to. Um, but um, as I was preparing for this talk, it, it did give me the opportunity um, to not only think about my time in ag, but also to um, think about a lot of the women that I have in ag that I've been able to interact with and uh, collaborate with, many of them that you see pictured here in this slide. And so today I'll take the opportunity actually to highlight many of them um, as we go through, because um, we should encourage, support, and, and celebrate um, each other. And so because this is a virtual platform, I do want to have um, some interaction with you. So I will ask some questions as we go along. And as we go, if you would please drop those um, in um, the chat and uh, Lauren will then um, feed them back to me as we go. So I can kind of have an idea of who I'm talking to. So first off, I'd like to do a, a roll call. Um, um, so I can know who I am speaking with. So if you would put in the chat right now and Lauren will kind of let me know what, um, what discipline are you in? We're, we're very diverse in ag. Are you plant pathology? Are you extension? Are you plant biology, IPGG? What, where are, are you from right now? So if you would put that in the chat and Lauren will let me know. Yeah, so we've got a variety of folks here in extension, plant pathology, international agriculture, alumni relations, crop and soil sciences. Wow, plant biology, yeah. uh, very diverse group, plant breeding, awesome. horticulture, social work. She just joined Alec. Hi, Anna, how are you? Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, so we've got entomology, future extension agent. That's right, that's what we like to hear. Very good, very good. So, science, so, yeah. science, yeah. So very good, welcome. I'm glad to see um, everyone here. We'll have everyone here. So um, today I, I will talk, let me see if it's gonna advance for me. Oh, there we go. So today um, I, I wanna take the approach of, of looking at uh, four different talking points here. I may or may not get through all of them because I do quite, talk quite a bit. So this is really to keep me on track. Um, and um, first um, I'll talk about how I got started in agriculture. And that is of course always a, a real question um, for several reasons, but for one, um, because obviously I am an African-American female and that is, is not typical typical, although we are getting better, um, it is still not the norm. So I'll talk a little bit about that, um, as well as what I do um, at UGA um, and outreach and mentorship. Um, out, these two things are very important to me here at the university and out in the community. So it deserves its, its, its own um, talking point. And then finally, um, I'll look at why I am still in agriculture. So that often is, is a question um, as well. Why am I still in agriculture? So um, when the question comes about with how did I get started in agriculture? Um, so let me give you a bit more background about myself. I'm, I'm originally from Nashville, Tennessee. Um, my mom um, was a medical receptionist at uh, Vanderbilt University Medical Center, and she retired after 35 years of service. And my father um, was uh, a mechanic and he retired after 35 years uh, of service. I, I do not have any background in FFA or uh, 4-H um, or any of that. So I say all of that to say that initially I had virtually no background in agriculture. However, um, I did have quite a bit of exposure in um, STEM, the basic sciences, um, through high school and all the way through college. And that actually was my prep because I was interested and my, my mom kept me in all different types of, of programs with those basic sciences. So um, I wanted to be a medical doctor. 
And uh, so I attended, um, as, as Laura mentioned, Tennessee State University in Nashville, Tennessee. And I was a biology major uh, pre-med track. And um, TSU is a historically black land grant university. And it is the only state funded historically black university um, in Tennessee. And so this whole time, again, um, no ag background, just STEM basic sciences. And um, I participated in many programs, um, shadowing programs for physicians, uh, with physicians. And um, I really didn't have that fire as, I, as you would expect for people who are really excited about a particular discipline, did not have that. Um, but I continued on um, um, through, um, and through college, uh, my freshman and sophomore year, again, participating in all of these different STEM types of programs and was doing well academically. Um, and then the summer uh, before my junior year, um, I was involved in a summer program at Vanderbilt University Medical Center. And it was a, it was a, a very rigorous program to be able to get into because it was for uh, junior and seniors that were interested um, in medical school. And um, it was initially for Vanderbilt University medical students first year. And so you go in and you learn the instrumentation for passing instruments to the surgeon. Sounds very exciting. Um, and it was very rigorous. We had to go learn the instruments. And then at, during the summer, we went into the OR. I was on the urology and gynecology services. Don't ask me how that happened, but that those were the two services that I was on. And um, I, I worked with a certified scrub technician. And it was really great experience for the first uh, probably two to three weeks. But then after that, it. I just was not interested. It, it became monotonous. It was the same thing over and over again, which is good because no one wants an exciting surgery. So uh, that was what it was meant to be. But it, it just was, I knew at that point that this was not something that I wanted to do. So then I went back my, my um, junior year um, and I took a genetics course um, from this gentleman here. Um, Dr. Lewis Miles, who um, is a professor uh, of biology at TSU. Um, phenomenal instructor, and I thoroughly enjoyed the course. Um, he talked about human genetics, and he also talked about uh, plant genetics. And um, he, is, he was working on um, soybeans, and he was interested in Pseudomonas syringae, disease resistance, and um, as we all do that I know now, he talked a lot about his research in um, the class and I was hooked from then. Um, and so I decided that I didn't want to go to medical school anymore um, and that I was interested in, in agriculture. And, but I needed to have more information because when you go to talk to my mom about changing, you need to have a plan because she, she, you need to have a plan. And so um, I talked to Dr. Miles and he talked to me about um, masters and potentially PhD and academia, all of these opportunities that I had no idea were available. Um, and so I then decided I am going to go to graduate school. And by that time, now we're moving into my senior year. And my, I told my friends, all of my classmates, they're in the pre-med program and they thought that I was crazy. They said, Ag, are you crazy? You you are on the track to being a physician. You'll be done in about four years, and you want to go to grad school. Um, and so I talked to my mom and my family as well, which are huge supporters of me. Um, I talked with my mom, and she she did have some concerns, and so did my family. And my mom's concern was that for she had two major concerns. One was. As an African American female, would you be accepted in that discipline, um, agriculture? And um, second, um, she was concerned that okay, when you finish, will there be a job for you? Is this a viable career for you? And um, those are two legitimate, uh, very legitimate concerns. And um, I did not have an answer for her, but I did tell her that this is really what I want to do. And she was supportive. She was supportive, but concerned. Um, and so I, I was good with that. And so I, I sat out a few months after I graduated to take the GRE. And um, then I applied to graduate school, uh, various pro, uh, graduate schools, all in ag. 
Um, and I got into various graduate schools, but I also had applied to Tennessee State and um, I wanted to work with Dr. Miles. He was the inspiration for me moving forward in ag. And so he said, yes, I was accepted to the program. And then I joined him um, at Tennessee State University uh, to work on my master's in myology. Now, this was my real first exposure to agriculture. Um, and working on plant pathogen interactions. Again, he was working on um, soybean bacterial blight, which is a huge problem, 4% to 40% yield losses, depending on the, the area and severity. Um, but this was also when I first started to learn about plant immunity and plant pathogen interactions. So with this, um, since we have a diverse group, I do wanna talk about what plant immunity is. I promise this is not a science talk, but understanding plant immunity and me describing it to you really sets the stage for my career choice and why I choose to do what I do. So um, a lot of research was going on at that time and very exciting um, um, developments and in science. And so um, most people were wanting to know what is plant immunity and how does it work? And so here, this is just a, a brief overview. So if you have a plant cell here, this green part is a plant cell. Uh, a plant is attacked by many different pathogens. And the reason most plants are resistant to most pathogens is because it has evolved an immune system. It has an immune system to allow it to be resistant. And so when you have a plant, this is the plant cell, and if, when it's attacked by um, different pathogens, you have a bacterium here, you have a fungus here, um, the, the pathogen, in this case, we'll say the fungus, it secretes effector proteins. These effector proteins, um, when secreted, if they are recognized by this example here, this is a plant protein. If, if, if this effector is recognized by this plant resistance gene protein, then that initiates, uh, um, initiates um, immunity, okay? So that means the plant is resistant. However, if this plant protein this resistance gene here is unable to recognize the effector. The pathogen is undetected, is unable to recognize it. That results in effector triggered susceptibility. And that results in susceptibility that we see here. We see disease, okay? So from then forward, my entire career really has focused around understanding how plants defend themselves against pathogens with the idea of improving resistance. Right, so I was very interested in this. I could see uh, how it could be applied and really having an impact um, on agriculture, not only here in the U.S. but internationally. So, um, at I was winding up my my master's program. Um, I was able to look at soybean cultivars and look at resistance and susceptibility to pseudomonas to um, bacterial blight. And I wanted to go on to get my, my PhD. So I applied to different programs. Um, all of these were in ag. Um, and all of these programs were a long way from Tennessee. Um, they were on the, the East Coast, the West Coast, and many were, were in the Midwest. But I was most interested in um, Kansas State University, which is in Manhattan, Kansas. Um, so I applied and I got an interview and then um, my mom and I went out for the interview. We decided to drive because we had not been to uh, Manhattan, Kansas before. And I, I, and I, I tell you that because I, I wanna share a quick story. You know, my mom still had reservations. She still had concerns about my career choice. Um, and so we, when we got to Manhattan, Kansas, we went to a restaurant and uh, we were looking on the menu and my mom said, um, where, where is, I don't see any sweet tea listed here on, on the menu. And I said, mom, it's, it's sugar on the table. And she was like, no sweet tea. So the, the, um, waitress came and, you know, my mom asked and she said, no, no, we don't have any sweet tea. You can use the sugar. And so then she left. And then my mom said, no sweet tea. Are you sure this is where you wanna go and where you wanna be? I don't know if you can trust people who do not like sweet tea. <laughs> so I say all that to say that we Southerners, we are serious about our sweet tea. And my mom still had some reservations. That was her way of, of putting that in there. So to make a long story short, I um, was accepted to uh, K-State and then I packed my bags and left and went to the Midwest. 
um, to uh, the Department of Plant Pathology. And the nice thing about this is that um, Plant Pathology at K-State had an interdepartmental genetics program, which was really what I was interested in. Remember, those were the ties from um, initially um, from my genetics, my interests when I was um, working on my master's. So uh, my degree actually is not in plant pathology, it's in genetics, but I, I, this was the, uh, the best of both worlds for me to be in a genetics department with a plant pathology background. So with that, um, then with, with that interest, I, I received a uh, K-State University Dean's Fellowship. And with that, um, I was able to, for the first year, um, well, for that first semester, I was able to rotate in um, labs that I was interested in um, to stay in for my entire program. So there were two faculty that um, I was really interested in working with. Um, they had indicated that um, they were interested in, in, in me as well. So I was very excited about the opportunity. And um, those two were um, uh, Jan Leach and, and Scott Holbert. Okay, and so I told you that I was going to highlight women in ag as we go through. And so my first highlight, the person is Jan Leach. Um, Jan Leach is a phenomenal um, um, researcher. She, she has broken barriers in looking at host plant resistance with uh, rice and bacterial blight. Um, a lot of her work is some of the first work in understanding molecular mechanisms and plant disease susceptibility and resistance. Um, and she is an overall phenomenal person. She's no longer now at UGA. She is at Colorado State where she is, um, a, she still has a very productive lab while she is in administration. And so um, Jan was a real mentor to me throughout my entire program and, um, and continues to be um, now. And so uh, the other person that um, I was interested in working with, um, as I mentioned, was Scott Holbert. And um, he was working on maize and Puccinia sorghi, which is common rust, which is a huge problem um, uh, for various reasons, but really um, because of, of its life cycle and how it's able to move freely from field to field, from state to state, even to um, other countries by wind. And I just really, I fell in love with, with fungi and I really wanted to work um, in this area to be able to uh, potentially develop cultivars with resistance um, to this particular pathogen. And not just to develop resistance, but resistance that is durable, that lasts um, over time. And um, so then I uh, worked with Scott and it was a phenomenal experience. Um, he is um, an awesome researcher, mentor and, and um, um, instructor. And much of what I know and what I apply to my program now um, came from a lot of my interactions and what I learned in his program. So he put me with, um, he gave me an undergraduate student worker. And this student worker was with me my entire time um, in grad school. And that gave me the appreciation for, for teaching and undergraduate research and hands-on research and an understanding of how important this is. And so just to give you an idea of what we worked on, um, this is um, rust. This is a rust spore, isn't it? It's beautiful. How could you not like rust? So, and um, here, this is a um, maize leaf that is susceptible. To, to rust. And you can see because of all of the rust colored spores here. And so these are um, uh, from a resistant plant. These are leaves from a resistant maize plant. So it carries resistance genes, as I talked about earlier, that allows it to be resistant to um, um, Puccinia sorghi. And the reason you see these flex is because in a resistant response, when you have that plant immunity, the plant um, that um, the plant area that is under the spore, um, that area dies. It is, it is HR and it's the hypersensitive response. So it dies under the spore, the spore dies and it keeps the spore from moving and developing throughout the plant. And that's what you see here. These are called flex. And so that is when the plant has initiated plant defenses, you have programmed cell death and the plant is resistant and you have no real issues with, um, with yield. 
And so that was what I worked on uh, for my PhD um, with, with Scott. And so we, we did quite a bit of work and we were able to develop many um, or several um, different maize lines that were resistant to Puxinia sorghi. And this is just an example of what I was showing you here. So this is all of those flex which indicates that indicates that this particular line is resistant to several rust um, isolates, right? Um, very several rust isolates here. So that means it had broad spectrum resistance, that type of resistance that we were looking for. So I was finishing my program and then I'm gonna try to keep up with the time. I was finishing my program and then um, Scott told me, you know, you're winding up, you need to, um, you, you've published, uh, a few papers, now you need to be more visible. Again, um, he was a very um, engaged mentor. And so he said, you need to be visible so they can make the connection with you and your work because it's time for you now to think about uh, a job. And so he said, so because of that, you're going to um, give a presentation. I want you to give a talk at the maze meeting. And I was mortified. And because uh, the May's meeting was my favorite meeting and everybody and anybody who is working on May's is always at that meeting. So as a student, you know, that's heaven. You're able to interact with people whose papers you're able to read. So, uh, you know, I enjoy the May's meeting, but as a speaker, it was a bit intimidating because uh, at the May's meeting, you, um, you do not have concurrent sessions. You have one session. So that means everybody is in that one session. So this was my biggest talk. Um, I was giving a talk in front of several hundred people. And as a student, I was very, very nervous about it. Um, but went ahead, went forward, um, um, gave the talk. And um, literally, un until today, to today, I cannot remember the first five minutes of that talk. I was that nervous. I, I can't remember the five, first five minutes. And so um, I was, um, I answered the questions um, after, and then I came off of the stage and I was in a panic because I thought, I asked God, did I say this, 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 and this? And he said, yeah, he said, well, it was a great talk. You said all of that. And um, so, and he was right because after I gave the talk, it really was an opportunity. I, I had opportunities to talk with several people about job opportunities. Um, again, so if there's students here, listen to your mentor. You know, they won't guide you wrong. Um, most of the time, we won't, most of the time. So, um, so then we returned back to Kansas and then I um, got an email from, from this gentleman here, um, Jeff Bennettson, who was here at uh, the University of Georgia. And he indicated that he saw my talk and he wanted to know if um, I was looking for a postdoc and if I was interested in possibly coming here um, to give a talk and interview for, for um, a postdoc um, in his lab. And of course, you know, that, that um, again, Jeff was one of those people who uh, papers I had read since I was a master's student. He's a pioneer in uh, transposable element work and in uh, the evolution of uh, plant disease resistance genes. Um, so of course I was interested. So I came and, and, and had the interview and was able to interact with the people in, in his lab. And his group was very different from what I was used to. Um, Jeff had a, a very big group. Um, and, um, but I saw that as an opportunity now to see a, how a different lab functions and how it works and, and how it addresses the challenges uh, of agriculture. Um, so then, um, um, I said, sure, um, he, um, I, I, the, the interview went well, then I went back and um, he offered me uh, the position. And so I wrapped things up at K-State um, and then finished, you know, finished uh, my PhD there. Um, and so the experience um, at K-State um, I wanna share was a, a, a phenomenal um, experience with having a, a really engaged mentor, um, my transition into graduate school was a challenge. Um, and that was because I was coming from having a lot of support from my family and friends, going to a place where I didn't know anyone. Um, it was hard. I, I, I did well academically and research wise, but I didn't have that support system. And then 
this is where a, a good advisor comes in and Scott said, you will be fine. He said, this happens in the first semester. You're not in academic trouble. You're doing well with research, keep it moving and, and you'll be fine. And, and that's exactly what I did. Um, and so finished, and I wanted to, to show this picture here to you, and I made it big. Um, this is Scott, um, my mom and I, and I made it big. So if you look really close, you can see my mom smiling right there. And she was very excited, and she was glad that her concerns were, were not an issue. Um, I didn't have any issues um, with being an African-American female um, at that time at K-State in the department, and I had a job lined up. And um, so she couldn't have been happier and she cried half the time as well. Um, so, and so that brings me um, to, uh, she mentioned, uh, Laura mentioned that I'm the graduate coordinator. Um, I have a, a real passion for, for, for graduate education as well as undergraduate education. And it's really because of my experiences of being at a minority and a majority institution and understanding the challenges that students have um, when they transition to these different institutions. Um, so it's really been, um, I've enjoyed being the graduate coordinator. And so that brings me to my next uh, female ag highlights, which is uh, Keisha Shelton. Um, she is an um, academic professional associate and graduate coordinator assistant in the Department of Plant Pathology. And Keisha also has a passion for students and being able to to provide them what they need in order to be successful. And she is also um, instrumental in organizing all of our um, applications for the Graduate Studies Committee to be effective and be able to review um, our applications, okay? So, and, and you guys, please keep me up on time. I'm not quite sure um, when I need to. Okay, okay. So then um, I left um, K-State and I headed um, to Georgia, University of Georgia here um, to, to work with, with Jeff. And so um, I, again, I was really excited about the, the opportunity to work with Jeff because I had the opportunity to work on two projects. One was I was continuing to work on maize and Puxinia sorghi, but um, a, a different aspect of, of that plant pathogen interactions. And then also now I'm, I was able to stretch out a little bit and work on a different plant system with, with a different challenge. And so I was working on Eergrastus teff. And so I'll tell you a little bit more um, about that. So um, Eergrastus teff, it, it really is, it's the most important food grain in Ethiopia. It's a, it's a minor cereal crop here. And um, it is um, very, very important in their diet, about two thirds um, of their diet. But it, the main issue, it is um, highly susceptible to lodging. And um, with, that, with that, they lose about 17 to 50% of, of, of yield. And that is huge um, in a developing country. And you see here where you have um, the, the TEF seed that are very small. This is a um, line, a TEF line that is um, resistant. So it is erect, no issues. And so here, right next to it, use my mouse. Right next to it, you see a um, lodging susceptible line. And you see how it leans over and then you, it's, it's very obvious how you would lose grain. So this also was a issue um, with wheat and rice, um, but as you know, result of the green revolution. So they were able to identify um, genes, uh, reduced height genes that reduce the height of, of wheat and rice lines um, in order to alleviate the problem with lodging and leaning over. So it was very successful. So we were interested in looking at the genetic diversity of these genes in Eergrastus teff, okay? And so my second project, and I won't go into detail about all of these projects. As I mentioned, this is not a science talk. I just wanna give you an idea of what we were working on. And um, the second project that I worked on was again, continuing with um, maize and um, um, resistance to Puxinia sorghi. And so the different aspect here is we were looking at allelic variation for resistance gene expression um, at um, the RP1 locus. RP1 are these genes that actually confer resistance to uh, Puxinia sorghi. And so we were working on the project and then Jeff said, you know, um, Shavanor, you really should write a, um, a USD postdoctoral grant. 
Um, and I had never written a grant before, and I thought this would be an awesome experience. And um, so I said, sure, you know, I think this is a, a great opportunity. So we were writing the grant, and um, this is another aspect of the learning project that I really enjoyed about being in, in Jeff's lab and him being engaged with his students and postdocs was being able to write with him. Um, I gave him uh, the, the, <laughs> the proposal, and then um, I got the proposal back and I was again mortified because it was red, it was red. And so uh, we, I, you know, revised the proposal and then sent it back to him and then we had a conversation and then we were good at that point. So um, a lot of that also happened with my previous advisors. So I, I try to tell my students now, when you get something back from me and it's red, don't let it bother you. The point is you want it to become less red as you move forward in, in your program. So um, submitted the proposal and um, I got an email a while back. I actually have forgotten about it. I submitted it because I was like, you know what? It's not going to be funded. Um, got an email back and read the email and um, lo and behold, it was funded. I, it, I was shocked. And I'm always shocked when the, the grants are funded. I think that keeps me from being disappointed if, if, if they're not. Um, but then that meant that I was able to stay in the lab uh, a little bit longer. And so um, continued working on these projects, um, very successful projects, especially the, the TEF project. Um, and then I had about a year and a half left. And I said, you know what, it's probably time to start looking for a job. But before um, I do that, I, I do want to do my other highlight. And the other highlight is Ann Lynch's Park. Uh, many of you probably know um, Ann. She is a national program leader for uh, NIFA. And she was actually the program leader that um, um, I communicated with about my postdoctoral fellowship. Before I submitted it, I had a few conversations with her. And I've submitted several grants as I've moved forward in my career to her. And she is one of the program leaders who you can actually have a conversation with her on the phone. You can call her. She will um, return your calls. Um, and I've served on several of her, um, her panels. Um, I had sent a request to her to say, when I first started this current position, um, I wanted to get a better idea of, of how to write grants and how grant panels worked. And I told her just to give me the opportunity to serve on some of these um, um, panels. And of course, she was, she was all for it. Um, but the, the, um, well, the other thing that I want to point out is that um, Anne is a huge supporter of, of um, supporting um, junior faculty for funding through, through her, through her uh, program. And that's one thing that, thing that I really respect about her when we uh, serve on committees together. So after that, um, I worked for a while. Um, please let me know, Lauren, if I start to get short on time, OK? So we're doing, we're doing well. OK, great. So um, then um, move forward through the program. And uh, you, you know what? I do want to mention that um, working um, with Jeff was uh, really Jeff and Scott prepared me for a position in academia. Um, I wasn't sure if that's what I wanted to do. And I think pretty much still at the end of when I was working with Jeff, I wasn't sure if that was what I wanted to do. But now when I look back on um, all of the opportunities and all of the things that they required their postdocs to do, um, I see how it now, it, there was a rhyme to the reason uh, for me to be able to be better prepared when I left um, and, and potentially in, in a faculty position. And so I was in um, Jeff's lab and then um, I had told um, my major professor and then a few other people that it was, I was looking for a job, a permanent position. And um, then a few months went by and then I get phone calls on your cell phone. So I was concerned about um, who, who it actually was. And so um, got to the phone and it was Scott Gold. And Scott Gold in, was a professor in uh, plant pathology here at UGA. And um, he indicated that he had, um, he saw Scott 
Holbert, my, my PhD advisor, at a conference. And Scott told him that um, I was here at UGA and that I was looking for a permanent position. And if he knew uh, of anything, just to uh, let him know. And then Scott said, well, you know, we, we are, you know, looking for someone at Plant Path to work on host plant resistance. And so um, then Scott said um, he was going to call me. And so that's what he did. He called me and he um, asked me, would I be interested in talking with him about um, uh, applying for a potential position um, in plant pathology? Um, and again, I, I wasn't sure yet if I wanted to be in academia, um, but I said, yeah, yeah, that, you know, that will work. And so then I, I uh, went to lunch and I got to lunch and Scott, Scott Gold was there. Um, Ron Walcott, and then also the department head at that time, um, John Sherwood. And we had a conversation about the department, um, the students, the faculty, um, what the position um, was looking for, and um, what I was looking for really as well. What, what was I interested in an academic position and potentially applying for, for this position? And um, I, you know, the, those guys are, are pretty good <laughs> with, with selling things. And so um, I was interested and, and there are three, there, there are reasons why. And one was because I would be able to do research. Um, I enjoyed teaching. And there was also opportunity for, for research and within all of that training other students. Um, I think that it is very important uh, for us, you know, it's our job to be able to train the next generation of scientists. And so that really fit into um, that aspect of it, but as well, I would be able to continue to work on host plant resistance. So I interviewed for the job, uh, came here, interviewed, uh, well, not came here, walked down the streets and interviewed for the job and um, met with faculty and students and um, the students were, were happy with what they were doing. And they were happy about um, working with the faculty members. Um, and the other aspect of it is that the faculty, when I talked with them, um, they actually collaborated with each other. A lot of them had um, research projects where they um, collaborated. And so to me, that indicated a cohesiveness um, in the department. And so, after I interviewed and everything went forward, um, they offered me uh, the position. And um, I was very excited about it um, to say the least, uh, but I had never negotiated any positions. And so again, this goes back to having a uh, mentor who is very engaged. And um, I sent the letter to, um, to Jeff and also to my uh, previous uh, two advisors and both of them said, this is a good deal <laughs> and a good opportunity. Um, you should accept um, if this is really what you wanna do. And um, um, long story short, I accepted the position and um, then I literally walked down the street to, to Miller Plant Sciences. And, um, and that's where, when I started here in, in the Department of Plant Pathology. And so um, with that, I would work on maize, switchgrass, and soybean. Again, carrying over some of that long time work that I have been working on from the very beginning, um, rust and, and maize as well. And then um, working on new projects, switchgrass and soybean. With the switchgrass project, I collaborate with, um, with Jeff and also with Katrine that I'll talk about in just a second as well. So that is my story about how I got started um, in, in ag. So let me ask you, um, how did you get started in ag? And Lauren is going to put that, put that in the comments section, please. How did you get started in ag? Um, because there, there are varying ways, of course, to, to move into this discipline. And I just kind of want to see some of, some of the diversity here. And it, it doesn't have to be long and drawn out. There's just something pretty short. And then Lauren will let me know. Yeah, so we are getting a variety of responses from 4-H projects to having an ag background. Um, Laura says she's grew up on the farm and active in 4-H. I have several other folks. Teresa grew up on a farm. Mm -hmm. um, and Anna says she was interested in farmer stress and a colleague invited her in. Okay. Shelton says she grew up on a farm, but 
it took field botany to get her to um, up another person at UAB to turn her into a plant pathologist. There you go. There you go. And so that those are very good responses. And my point here, I, I hope I'm looking at the time. I have quite a bit more to get through, so I'm trying to make sure. But those are very good responses. And the point here is that you can see how it is important for us to be able to reach out um, to students to be able to um, recruit and retain them in agriculture, right? We kind of have to stretch out a little bit. We have to put these things into our classrooms so they can have hands-on experience and, and um, in, in agriculture. So we kind of have to look at where we need to expand so people who may not have um, experience like myself in ag, how can we now introduce them to ag? Now we won't turn everybody into plant pathologists or uh, bring them into ag, I understand that. But what that will do, those that we don't bring in the agricult into agriculture, they will definitely be an advocate for, for agriculture. Okay, so the next thing I'll move into is, um, what, what I do at UGA, um, which involves research, teaching, and outreach. And I'll try to move through this because I know I spent quite a bit of time on, on the front end. And so for my research program, um, again, as you already know, I work on host plant resistance to, to rusts and smuts. And um, I, there are three projects going on right now, and there are varying projects within these projects as well. And so the first, we are working on maize and teosinte. Um, teosinte is a wild progenitor of maize, and we're looking for resistance to Ustilago matis. And uh, my current student, Usha Bata, this is her project, and she's looking at comparative genome sequence analysis um, on teosinte and maize. And that's in order to be able to identify and characterize resistance to Ustilago matis. Again, um, creating um, resistant cultivars. And um, you see here underneath, um, I'm involved in quite a bit, or we are, um, because my students are the ones that interact directly with the undergrads, but we're involved in undergraduate training, um, undergraduate research, um, as well as with, with graduate students as well. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in the next slide. We also work um, on soybean um, with resistance uh, to, to um, Asian soybean rust. And Ellison Clary um, is a master's student and he works on this project and he's specifically looking at diversity and molecular interactions of soybean to Asian soybean rust, again, with the idea of understanding the diversity of the pathogen to be able to um, develop resistance. And again, several um, undergraduates, postdoc um, students working on this project previously or something similar to this project as well. And so um, the other aspect of my program is uh, maize and we work on maize and switchgrass. And so again, here we're, we're looking at rust, Puxinia sorghi, Puxinia polysora, and Puxinia immaculata. And um, Lorna Nissen um, is um, the lab uh, manager, and um, she works on these this project and various other projects as well. And Lorna is my um, next highlight um, um, woman in ag. Um, Lorna is a true plant pathologist. She has a master's and a PhD in, in plant pathology, and she is an asset um, to the lab for that and various um, other reasons. And Lorna um, manages the lab, and she works with also quite a bit um, of our students that we have, as you can see here, whether it be undergrad students, um, and well, yeah, all of these are undergrads, working with other, uh, undergrad students that come into, la into the lab um, for um, research. So another aspect uh, of what I do, obviously, is um, instruction. And um, I teach two graduate level courses and all of them deal with host pathogen interactions or, and the genetics of, of these types of, of interactions. And um, I, I knew that I would um, enjoy teaching. Um, I've enjoyed it, I TA'd um, in undergrad and with um, um, my graduate program, <laughs> but I wasn't sure if I would be any good at it um, really. And so um, I've, I've continued to, to, to work on um, um, my, my skill set uh, for, for teaching. 
uh, but I enjoy being in um, the classroom with the students and seeing them really get the information and also be able to, to apply that information. And so um, as I move forward, my, my second um, year in, um, in, the, in my current position, I received an email from two of my colleagues, um, Ron Walcott, and um, Scott Gold, you see a, a pattern developing here, um, which actually is, is, is really one of the reasons I enjoy the Department of Plant Pathology is because the, the senior faculty um, are involved with, with the junior faculty. And so um, uh, the both of them were um, our Lily teaching fellows. And so they sent me an email and said, um, you know, hey, Smith, you should um, really um, um, apply to uh, the Lilly Teaching Fellow Program. And I went online and, and, and looked up to see what it was. And then they actually had sent an email out and I didn't realize that that, that is what it was. And uh, the Lilly Teaching Fellow Program, it provides opportunities um, to um, new assistant professors um, in their first, second or third year. And it's really to further develop um, skills associated with teaching and being effective in the classroom. So I applied to the program, again, not thinking that I would be accepted to the program, um, and I actually was. Um, and so I was a part of the 2010-2012 um, um, cohort. And so being a part of this program, of course, we had to um, um, develop a project associated with teaching, but we also had to select a um, mentor. And um, it, it was really no question, I, I selected um, Katrine DeVos. Um, as my Lilly Teaching Fellow mentor, um, we were supposed to select someone who we thought that would that was in line with what we were doing. And um, the one of the positives of working with Jeff is that I had access to to Katrine. And um, um, Katrine is a phenomenal scientist, um, mentor, um, and instructor. And so she agreed to, to be my mentor and she continues to be uh, my mentor. Uh, Katrine's office is just right around the corner. And when we were in better times, when, whenever I had um, issues um, being a female in ag, um, I would go to her office and, and talk to her about that. Um, and we've talked about different things, both personal and professional. So um, Katrine really is and continues to be um, a mentor um, to me. And we also uh, collaborate on a um, switchgrass project um, together as well. So um, I, I was also um, selected as a women's leadership fellow um, to help with leadership and development. And um, I, I did um, benefit greatly from being a part of this program. That was a, a program out of uh, the provost's office. And um, we continue to network this Women's Leadership Fellow um, uh, program in the different cohorts. Even some women have left and gone to different places and we're still um, able to form that cohort. So that has been a huge support as well. So my, my next highlight um, is a current Lilly Teaching Fellow, um, which is uh, Laura Ellistad. And she's an assistant professor here at UGA in poultry science. And um, I, have the privilege of serving as her, her current uh, Lilly Teaching Fellow. Again, I was shocked that you know, she would ask me, but um, I, I really have a benefit as a mentor um, interacting with her. She's doing really, really good work with research and teaching. Um, they, they do surgeries on, on poultry. I mean, who knew? Uh, I deal with plants all the time. And so um, I really look forward to, to seeing her continue to grow um, and develop as a scientist and as an instructor. We have about five minutes, Dr. Smith. Five minutes, okay. So um, let me move on here to outreach and mentorship. Um, as I mentioned, I'm a huge proponent of outreach. Um, and so um, we do a lot of work in our, um, in my program with um, undergraduate research um, as well as high school. And this is, um, this, these are a few pictures of some of the students where we have students from the Young Scholars Program um, as well as um, undergraduate research. And I wanna show this particular picture here because this is three generations of young scholars in my program. Uh, Amaja was um, in this picture, she is um, a, um, um, a uh, chaperone 
for the Young Scholars Program. And then we have Michaela, who is a returning Young Scholar. And then um, this is Chris, Kristen. Um, he is um, a, he was a current Young Scholar. And so you see them sciencing here and doing all of their work. And we also have students, which is Amaja again, who are involved in Young Scholars Program, CAES, Undergraduate Research, as well as McNair. So all of these students are very engaged. The, the, the point here is that some of these students, including Jerron, Graystad, as well as Michaela, they finish and then come back. Jerron is, he was a young scholar. He is a current um, um, master's student here in the Department of Plant Pathology, and so is Michaela. So this hands-on experience matters and it works in regards to getting these students in, 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 the, in the lab, in the field, in the greenhouse and exposing them to agriculture and um, allowing them to make critical decisions about um, their future. And this is um, so the young scholars, we take them to Costa Rica and um, at the, the junior and senior um, young scholars and uh, for them to experience sustainable agriculture in a different setting. And so these are some of the examples of some of their experiences where they were learning, learning about integrated farming and also what fields look like in agriculture in Costa Rica, as well as with the homestay. I'm trying to move through through these. So um, also, I, I had the pleasure of serving as um, the manners advisor, um, faculty advisor, um, Narki Norton. It was a pleasure working with him. Um, he was the um, staff advisor. And manners is minorities in agriculture, natural resources, and related sciences. And these are a group of phenomenal students. This um, manners is a um, nonprofit organization, and it's pro it's networking and um, it provides professional development um, um, for the students. And they are involved in regional, regional pre presentations, community service. We have a potluck at the end of every year um, just to celebrate the students and their accomplishments. Here are some of the graduates. Um, and then uh, this is Narki and I um, during his master's graduation. Um, and this is when um, the chapter one um, outstanding chapter of the year uh, for region two, um, and um, then second place for national chapter of the year. And so a lot of this really culminates when you see students um, who um, reach back. And so this is a picture of um, um, Travier Clemens and she was uh, a past president of Manners and she sent me an email and was so excited that she um, got into a dental school. And this is one of the pictures that she sent me. No, it is not an ag, however, this young lady um, worked hard for agriculture when she was here for manners. And what this means is, as I mentioned earlier, no, she's not an ag, but she certainly is an advocate um, for agriculture as she moves forward. How much time do I have left? I'm probably out of time, right, Lauren? You are down to the wire. That's right. We've got one minute to go. And people may have questions for you. So okay. um, keep that okay. in mind as well, well wrapping up. I will make this brief. I will make this brief. So I'm also um, involved with um, USDA MIFA, which is Research and Extension Experiential Learning for Undergrads. And um, this project is led by uh, CJ Sai. And you can see all of the names listed here. This, this is a phenomenal group of, of women that are, are, are making gains and doing well in agriculture. We also have a man here. We have um, 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 Jim Liebensmack uh, is a part of it. And so um, I want to, so this project, um, they're looking at promoting diversity in ag and it's through integrating undergraduate training and all of the experiences with hands-on experience. And um, so for these students, a part of what I was supposed to do is to, to have them find a way to see um, agriculture in the field and um, have that connection with the farmers. So um, I identified or reached out to Amanda Tedro, who is one highlight here, and she was phenomenal in being able to identify farmers at the Athens Farmers Market who were willing to allow the students to work with them. That's what these uh, pictures are here. We take a morning, we take the students out to the farmer's market. They work with the farmers. They really get a clear understanding of what it means what, from the field to the table and seeing the farmers interact with their customers and how important those interactions are. The students then write a, an article 
And then um, the winners of that article, that article is um, then published in the UGA Ag Extension newsletter, Shades of Green. And so here are our winners here from 2019. We're unfortunately able to have, unable to have 2020 because you know, of the state of things. Um, and my final highlight here is Marin Brewer. Um, Marin Brewer is an associate professor in the Department of Plant Pathology um, here at UGA. And um, uh, Marin was the coordinator for this project in regards to um, all of um, the, the applications that we have to review and um, organizing the student schedule. It's normally a cohort of about 10 students. And so that's, that's a huge job. Um, and so again, Agriculture and exposing these students is, is really huge. We are training um, the, the future uh, of our disciplines. So it, it's very important and critical for us to, to have that engagement. I will keep talking. Thank you for showing your face. <laughs> This is phenomenal. Look, you have so many amazing things um, that you've done and that you're sharing with us today. I mean, I could listen to it again, your story and, and, and more. So um, we, we do unfortunately have to kind of pull this down to a close. And I would like to have anyone that would like to ask a question, type that in the chat or the Q&A. Just wanted to give them a chance to the audience to reach back out to you and ask anything that they would like to. Um, and I'll, I guess I'll just uh, let you wrap it up. Um, you may have final thoughts for us. I don't want to just cut you off there. But. <laughs> well, um, I think the final thoughts, uh, I'll end it here. Um, and one of my favorite quotes is, I may not have gone where I intended to go, but I think I've ended up where I needed to be. And that really explains my whole movement from at the very beginning to where I am where I am now. If you had asked me at the very beginning if this is where I would be in my career, I would say absolutely no. I, and so that's why it's so important for me, I believe, for us to interact with these students to give them guidance as well. And then this last uh, little slide here, sorry guys, but, but <laughs> <laughs> this is, you know, actually true. Women in agriculture and science, we are overcoming many obstacles. And, you know, the obstacles that are right there are not all of them, but many women out there, those that are listening now have made phenomenal contributions um, to agriculture. And I appreciate it. So I thank you. I thank you for listening and I apologize for being long. Oh, that, that was great. We certainly appreciate that. And I can certainly um, relate to your quote. I think many of us can say the exact same thing. This is not at all what we thought the path would look like, but we ended up in the right spot. Um, I think we have one question. So we'll try to take one question before, um, before we go. Um, Gabrielle says, thank you for sharing your experience. Do you have advice on how extension agents can best share the knowledge that you and others at the university generate? Um, connections, to network with us, um, to send, a, send an email. If she's interested, she can send me an email and then we can have a conversation about what she needs. And then um, I can we can have dialogue about how I believe I can then fulfill that need. And I think that's what it takes is us really reaching out, networking, making connections to be able to, you know, address some of these issues to be able to reach out. I, I think that is such a good point. Christy, could you or Lauren type Chavanor's um, email address in the chat in case anyone needs that? Um, you could also Google Chavanor Smith at UGA and it'll, it'll give you the email address. But um, I, I definitely would second how important it is to reach back and help others and, and mentor and play it forward. Um, I think that's always important and I'm always amazed at how grateful people are when you just um, help them, which is just a kind human thing to do. So, um, well, I also want to thank uh, Lauren and everyone that helped us set this up. We will record, um, we will have this recording posted. We'll also have other recordings posted. So if you're interested, um, bored and need a little, uh, want something exciting to watch, um, some of our archived uh, webinars, we'd love for you to do that. And um, you can look for more information at extension.uga.edu or caes.uga.edu. So 
thank you all for being here and uh, y'all have a wonderful, happy holidays. Well, thank you, Laura, too, and to everyone who, who helped and pulled everything together. Lauren and the tech guy, we couldn't do it without him and for everyone joining. Well, thank you for being willing to tell your story. My pleasure.